I've titled this video The Reality War because I was guided to do so, but I generally wouldn't like to put the word war in the title of one of my videos. However, I think this stresses the importance of what is going on right now in regard to the dueling realities. It's a large topic and I, I, I've, I've talked about it before in bits and pieces. I will begin by quoting something Thoth gave me that uh, I've quoted several times because it's one of the most, I believe, spot on things I've ever received from that source. And it is, we live in a multidimensional existence and must each choose where to place our focus and intent. It is no longer about embracing a belief system, but becoming a register of cosmic force that focuses on a streaming of purposeful design. Of course, the we mentioned here is us on planet Earth, but also in other worlds and other dimensions. There are a lot of videos out there about the ETs, extraterrestrials, that are visiting Earth, those that are working with our secret government, that is what Thoth would call the OWL, the One World Legion, or at least aspects of that, um, and other beings. You know, they have a lot of different things that they call them, um, and some of the information is really not genuine, but much of it is in regard to these different types of beings. One source that is very credit, credible is uh, Linda Moulton Howe, who's been around a long time, and she has some really good sources. Um, so I consider, you know, her information genuine for the most part. And certainly she's an excellent researcher. So I was listening to one of her videos the other day. I don't generally do that. Uh, it's really not the area that I'm focusing on uh, very much, but for whatever reason I was listening to it. And she was speaking about what some of her intel sources had told her about certain of these beings. And, you know, I was like, oh my God, you know, it was really dense. And Thoth comes in and says, don't accept that into your field. Now, he didn't mean that I should shut my eyes and not know about it. That's what, not what he was talking about. Don't accept that into your field. You can listen to things, you can look at things when necessary so that you stay informed, not gobbling it up like candy. But um, when you feel it's necessary or you are doing it by chance, I don't think anything exactly is by chance, um, you know, uh, don't, don't take it in to your field. Don't take it into your system, to your being. So he also said to me, realize that even though this is a genuine reality, it is an intrusive reality. It's not concurrent with the path we are moving upon that takes us to the ascension dynamic of LP40, like principle 40, the flashpoint, moving us from world system one into a world system two, which Thoth calls the new earth star for us, for our planet. And um, when he calls it an intrusive reality, he means that there are aspects of what we are living, seeing, experiencing in our lives that are not the genuine reality path. I, I don't even want to say timeline, although timelines are obviously extremely affected by this. But it is a, an intrusive um, field like... Uh, Okay, how can, I, how can I describe it? Okay, so you have 
let's say you throw a stone in the water and it creates these ripples, okay? That's the reality that's been, uh, that's been put forth and it's creating the ripples. But what if, what if someone then took a string and they, somebody else, you know, you, you throw the stone in the water and the water makes these beautiful ripples. Here you go down your rippling path and somebody comes along and takes a, a, a whip or a string, a string and goes and, and puts that in and whips it in there. And you've got this little whip, this little string that goes whoo, and it disrupts an aspect, not all of the, not all of the, the rings, but just a little part of it. And it enters that, that part of the, the sphere, the ring of light, and it goes, and it just sort of splits it and enters it, you know, like a little worm. And now that has affected where some of the ripples are going, but not the, not the bigger ripple. So here you have this little ripple on the side that's kind of broken, and it's not a pure ripple like a stone would make in the center of consciousness that moves out. It's this little, little worm that kind of takes off and and co-ops some of that ripple and fractures it. Now, once that has been fractured, in, in my scenario that I'm speaking about here, then an alternate timeline can start to form. And it can be totally manipulated because the fracture was totally manipulated. Even wars that we have on in this world, like the ones that are going on now, um, and there's very much human beings involved, um, it's, it's influenced by this kind of negativity. And this kind of thing has been happening on the planet. These, these intrusions have been happening in various forms uh, for, for eons of time. The original planet, uh, the original Gaia, when the higher lotus reality, as Thoth calls it, streamed down into Earth, it was already, you know, a primitive world that had some things going on that wasn't quite, you know, it was unconscious. The lotus stream that came down to the planet was full of consciousness and light, and it brought some original souls down to the Earth. But when it touched the Earth, when it got to the physical planet, um, before, you know, as, as Gaia was beginning to receive her soul, uh, the, the rock that it was, was very unconscious. And Gaia started filling it with consciousness, like, a, like an empty cup. And all of this was beautiful. But along the way, if we go eons later, you know, the Anunnaki and others, they're not the only bad fish in the sea, um, came and, you know, with their little worms and started wiggling in there and creating these other, these other aspects. As I have said before, what is really important to realize with all of this is that these lower end experiences are really in a very narrow bandwidth of highly magnetic energy. So it presents itself as all pervasive and yet it's extremely limited and vulnerable. It's vulnerable because when we turn the light switch on, and the light shines, it disappears. Now that may be oversimplifying it a little, but actually not. We just don't realize our power to be positive light bulbs in this world. I mean, we realize it philosophically, but it's a true reality. It's a quantum science experience. It's part of a, the universal law. And none of this, none of these ghosties in the night, so to speak, can override universal law. Of course, they have their many agendas and whatever, but this video, I just don't want to go into all of that. I've mentioned it before about wanting to possess the Imstra molecule and all of that. But what I want to talk about here is more about what we are doing as human beings and what we can do to overcome all of this negativity because it's not just about these intrusions of beings. They're the tail end of the whole thing. How they came to be with us in their intrusive little worm-like forms 
is because we allowed our light shield to come down. We dimmed it. And in doing that, we invited the viral cosmic cloud that Thoth calls the archonic cloud to feed on us, uh, to feed on our fears, our, our anger, our doubts, all of this. Um, which if we had not let down that shield, uh, we'd still have some of these things we needed to deal with, but we could deal with that within our own sphere of consciousness and development. But we let it down so far, we let the shield down so far that, uh, you know, it was dinner time for the, for the cosmic virus, uh, the best way to put it, I guess, because it feeds on our fears, angers, and all of these things. So here we are, and we've been this way for a while, and it's been developing for a long time. Now we are at a crisis point, but that crisis is also a gift to us because it is telling us it is time to open our eyes, our hearts, and our minds and see where we truly are and what power we possess, what spiritual enlightened beings we truly are, and take action on that level. So, it's a gift in disguise. Of course, we are not alone in this. We have illumined masters, angelic beings, um, what I used to call ultra-terrestrials, but now I'm referring to them more as star kindred and inner earth kindred. Uh, these are the ones who, uh, as Thoth calls it, are under the unimanity pact of equilibrium worlds. A mouthful, but apparently that's some kind of an actual um, oath that has been taken, pact, as he said. And uh, this is shared by the many worlds that share our hologram of the universe, which would be those of similar genetic frequency, crystalline genetic frequency of light. Um, and by that, I mean that it is metatronic or full light spectrum oriented. Even though we live in largely a half light spectrum oritronic world, in our way of thinking and being in this planet at this time, uh, we are metatronic beings. We just haven't turned on all the switches yet. So uh, these kindred, star kindred, come from that same field of consciousness and genetic frequency. Some of them may look a little different, but not entirely. They, they have, they're pretty much under the uh, same kind of um, blueprint, Adam Kadmon, as Thoth calls it, or similar one, than, that we are. And then there are the in-betweeners. They aren't under the Unimanity Pact, perhaps, but they're rather harmless and um, have a certain intellect and curiosity about this planet uh, without being intrusive. So there's a mixed bag, of course. That's how life is. But all of this is really just contingent to the true core, and that is that we need to come back to our true frequency, that we were given originally in the blueprint of this planet and from the soul of Gaia. And we can't have our ascension, our LP40 flashpoint ascension from a world system one to a world system two until we recover that true frequency that we had initially. It doesn't have to be full blown, you know, and, and perfect by any means but it needs to be recaptured in its essence. The sad part of this is that there are very human beings on this planet who have struck an alliance with the more negative off-planet beings to take us down another reality path where their control would be far more present upon us. And as scary as that sounds, again, remember, all of this must be conducted by them in a very narrow bandwidth. It's a very shaky scenario for them. The minute the uh, 
veil is lifted and we see the little guy trying to control the whole stage with a few little gears and knobs that are practically falling off in his hands, the game is over. And that's where we're approaching very closely now. It's also a fact that the, uh, or according to what I received from Thoth anyway, the, the new guard of the owl, the One World Legion, the new guard uh, wants to break the ties with the off-worlders and create their own, as I've said before, which is not any better scenario. But there's all this at play right now. And when things are changing, when the guard is changing on the side that needs to be uh, escorted out of the theater, um, that's when they're we at their weakest. So all of these things uh, figure into our, um, our ability to, to take our stand now for the, the righteousness of the Spirit uh, and how that righteousness will prevail. We also have the setup of the natural forces that are going on with the planet, which are all in alignment with the spiritual forces. And so that's solar forcing, what, you know, what's going on with the changes in the planet. That means the magnetic field is shifting. Again, a time where we can more readily become the true stewards of this planet because the force will be with us. So there's so much good to see in all of this, even though we must address and be knowledgeable about, to an extent, of these other aspects because they are part of the picture. And yet they're a very, very small part and they're reflecting themselves in mirrors as giant aspects of it all. So we must always put it in its place and understand where our power lies in the scenario. Where all of this is really leading us is back to universal healing, not just our planet, but what we know as the universe because our universe is really a holographic field of projection from the unified soul consciousness. And that consciousness is now ready to take flight, to go beyond the spectrum that we feel is our comfort zone. And in order to do that, we must heal a lot of aspects of the what Thoth calls universal tear, now that's a large topic, one I know only a very small a bit about, even though he's been speaking to me about this for at least 40 years, he's never revealed the whole story. And, you know, the way I work with this entity um, and this consciousness, the streaming, whatever you want to call it, it gives me information when it feels this is the right time for me to receive it, and not until then. So I can't tell you the big story about the universal tear. But I do know that it represents a point of time that things exploded. Maybe it's in connected to what the researchers call the Big Bang, which those says is uh, sort of true, but not entirely true. They, they don't have the the real picture about it. So I've always been suspicious that the Big Bang and the Universal Terror have a relationship, and I'm pretty sure it does. But in any case, all we need to know, I think, right now is that we are part of a much larger unimanity project of healing all of this, bringing it back into order. So even when we move into a world system too, that's not the end of the story. We're just repositioning ourselves for this, uh, this greater effort of healing the universal tear.